Definition of curl. If F is equal to PQR is a vector field in R3 and PX, QI, and RZ all exist, then the curl of F is defined by the curl of F equals RY, meaning R partial of Y, minus Q partial of Z, I, plus P, Z, minus Rx, J, plus Qx, minus Py, K. Note that the curl of a vector field is a vector field in contrast to divergence. So look below here. It says the definition of curl can be difficult to remember. To help you remembering, we use the notation del cross F to stand for determinant that gives the curl formula. So here's where it actually comes from, right here. And if I take the cross product, I'm just gonna do the first one so you can see exactly how this works. So if I take my I, that means I'd cross off that column in that row, and then I would take the product of D, D, Y, R, and then minus D, D, Z, Q, And that's really just Ry minus Qz. And if you look at the first one here, that's exactly what we see there. So if I just set this up this way, I could use this determinant to get the formula, and I wouldn't have to memorize the formula. The biggest thing to pick up from here is realizing del is equal to d dx comma d dy comma d dz. Now keep in mind, up here is a three-dimensional vector field. Look below now. It says if F equals PQ is a vector field in R2, then the curl of F is, by the definition, is the curl of F equals QX minus PYK. Because this is a cross product here, and the cross product is in the XY plane, it's natural that when I do that cross product, I'm going to get vector K. So let's do number 214 below. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up all of these QR, um, QZ, or I'm saying RY, QZ, and I'm just going to set those all up on the side. And I'm going to put them in order of the formula here, and that just helps a lot more that way. So remember here, if I'm doing number 214, this is P, oops, this is Q and this is R. And you might want to write those out to the side somewhere. But if I look at that first one, that's X E to the two Z. And I'm finding uh, the derivative with respect to Y. So that R Y is going to be zero because there is no Y. That means it's a constant. So then Q Z, here's my Q down here at the bottom here. Oops. And my QZ then is going to be Y squared cosine Z. And then my PZ here is going to be 6XYZ. And then RX, that's going to be E to the 2Z. And then my QX, that's going to be 0. And then the PY, that's going to be 3XZ squared. So then the curl of F is going to equal, and I'm just going to use component form here, my RY, which is 0, minus my QZ, which is Y squared cos Z. And I like that I just put them all in order so I can just go right down the list here. So then the next one's going to be 6XYZ minus, and then that's going to be E to the 2Z. And then the last one then is going to be 0 minus 3XZ squared. So there it is. And I definitely have to clean it up as much as I can if I'm going to get full credit for this. So this is going to be minus Y squared cos Z 
comma 6xyz minus e to the 2z comma negative 3xz squared. So there's my answer for the curl of f. So there we go. Now, one more thing to talk about about this curl is we're going to use this component to talk about circulation. If I think about this surface here and I think about a point on the surface and I'm talking about that curl, the curl is, hey, how am I curling there? Which means how is that going to cause that particle there to rotate? Or is it going to cause it to rotate on that surface? That vector field affecting that point or a particle at that point. Is it going to cause it to rotate? And that's what we mean with this curl. Now, again, this is going to be the nice component that's going to really bridge the gap between Green's circulation form and Stokes' theorem. So that's the beauty of this, too, and that's where this component is going to come in handy for us later. But for now, this is the curl.